It's been a while. So where do we start this? Well, for those of you that are unfamiliar, I'm, I guess you could say, dropping out of my PhD, putting it on hold. Uh, yeah, first year PhD student, putting it on hold. I want to explore my entrepreneurial interests. And I've sort of been figuring my way around how I want to communicate this journey. And that's sort of been the priority at the moment. Um, yeah, I guess you could say that. And so to essentially communicate what I'm working on, my timeline and everything like that, I've been trying to originally make two hour videos and then make the titles as like informative as possible, but it just, it's hard to follow. So I started working on my website and it's live now. You can access it, see, access it, see everything that I'm working on. Um, so you can read a little bit about me, my background in the bio. Uh, this page, contact me, I'm working on, but my YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, and a bunch of these I'll work on eventually. And portfolio is just what I'm working on in the website. I'll come back to this. And this is sort of the main focus of the website for now. And if you haven't been following my journey, essentially I tried to be well-rounded in, in entrepreneurship, but more so from the perspective of uh, I'm a human and there's a bunch of areas in my life that I want to make sure I'm healthy, I guess you could say. And areas of wellness essentially boil down to seven areas. Emotional wellness, environmental wellness, occupational and financial wellness, intellectual wellness, physical wellness, social wellness, spiritual, and then life ops is an eighth area that I added. It's more like the the planning and the sort of admin or the logistics, like a ghost area of wellness. And emotional, I have some things. I have uh, uh, each of these is filled out. However, I'm not focusing on all of them. Emotional wellness, for example, I have no current efforts. Same thing with environmental. Occupational is my main one because of entrepreneurship. Inter intellectual, I only have something because I'm still in my PhD for the next like two months. So in those two months, I have work to do here. Physical wellness, this is something I'm taking care of. Social wellness, don't have anything yet. Same thing for spiritual. And then life ops, I do have some things that are just sort of like helping facilitate the journey, make me as productive as possible. So let's focus on, let's first cover physical wellness. So for physical wellness, I have two main sort of priorities. First is optimal health. What that essentially also boils down to is uh, correct or optimal nutrition, exercise, sleep, and then minimizing stress. Because for me, at least, I have very had very high blood pressure. Now it's going down. It's very close to just being normal. So this is working out for me. And then I'm also uh, half marathon. And then, oh, okay, there we go. Uh, so for up March Optimal Health, just going over it, I for each of my efforts, I essentially have it. Efforts is, as in projects, I, they're synonymous to me. Um, but for each, just have one sentence summary, the, the purpose of it, any principles I'm following, and then sort of my my what I envision it to be. And I, I would recommend this for any project that you do, just have like a, an idea of, what does success look like and what, why you're doing it so you can always remember. Um, but anyways, this one's actually kind of involved because we're talking about very important pillars like mental health, sleep, nutrition, fitness. I try to be concise, but as you know, there's lots to cover. So it's an introduction, how, to pre how I prepared for this journey. You can take inspiration from it. And then my plan for each area. So for sleep, this is everything I'm going to try to do. So I try to have 90, a score of 90 or more per night. It's not working out so far, but we're getting there. This is what I'm following for my nutrition, uh, my goals, and then my plan, my specific plan. And here's my specific meals, the specific meals that I'm following exactly down to the gram. Um, I will cover this eventually all in summary videos, but for now, while I'm working on the website, still updating things and figuring out uh, figuring out the specific format 
of these uh, projects and sort of refining it I I don't want to just make a video oh, I thought I fixed this let me see Let's see if it's updated I think it is yeah yeah it looks better now okay and uh, biomarkers is just what I'm measuring to make sure I'm making progress. Equipment I'm using. And then, so a lot of it is just preparation. Like, what do I need to do and how am I going to accomplish it? Because my form of fitness is going to be running. It's going to change soon, given that I'm moving out, and which is actually the reason I haven't been able to make these consistently. Moving out, packing, takes a lot of time. And I'm also working on the website. And I just wanted to focus, get it get it out um, so yeah running may not be your form of exercise so you'll want to adjust that and yeah so anyways uh, merging sort of all these different plans so my meal plan is, is just you're eating it at a certain time exercise you're exercising at a certain time um, yeah, so this is more like a concise overview of the all the plans merged together, and then you just have to execute. It's not that difficult. Well, actually, it is difficult planning and making sure you do your daily plan. And I would actually recommend doing one step at a time, like one new in, one new habit at a time. I went from not doing any of this to trying to change my sleep, trying to change what I'm eating in the morning, trying to, um, what else did I change? Yeah, what I'm eating, and then meditation, and reading. So lots of different habits that I'm changing. And it's been dragged, I've been dragging it out a little bit. Uh, like ideally, I would have wanted to follow this the first week and just follow it for 90 days completely. But it's been almost like two months. Gave myself like a month to just, uh, just jump, just adopt it. And even now, I'm still, I'm I'm like seventy percent adoption. So that's that's March to optimal health. I'll continue to update it. You can see everything I'm doing there. So let's get into what we're mainly here to talk about: entrepreneurship starting up what are my goals and my current efforts are march to startup and this one i'm still adjusting march to startup is the journey i've been on for a while uh have these filled out and then here's my timeline so essentially how i'm breaking down this journey i try to make it more clear since my previous videos uh, so first, I've sort of broke it down into sections. First one is just building a base. What does that mean? For me, it meant like I need a project and task management system. I need to decide whether I'm going to leave my PhD, need to uh, improve some of my, I guess, computer productivity. What productivity apps do I want to install and anything else that I need to do. So that was just going through seven years of files, cleaning everything out, and now I know where everything's at, more or less. Planning out my finances, which you can actually see. Um, I'll go, yeah, we'll go over that in a little bit. And also just, uh, it, how do you say? Adopting optimal health or healthy habits. Uh, for me, optimal health takes priority because as soon as I... Uh, how do you integrate these habits, make them part of my day to day and um, actually become habits, then it's it's just in the background. Like I don't even need to think about it anymore. So that's building base. Next part, community building here. Um, I guess I don't need this too much to start up, but the thing that about it is if I'm going to record, spend hours, uh, like putting in the effort to make make it so that people can follow my journey, then why not just actually spend some time in and refining the 
the delivery and the the community so first part for me is like having a home base so that's this website filling in the website with uh, everything that I'm working on had to add terms and conditions because I am talking about optimal health I don't know how people are I think people try to sue so I didn't want to deal with that so just have terms and conditions I will use affiliate links just for the projects that are, that are important and for the resource just recommending or mentioning the products that I'm using I'm not going to mention any other products besides what I'm using and then yeah just finish setting these up and then at that point I'm going to make a video I'm going to make a community post on YouTube so that's this is sort of what I've been working on mainly and this week next week as well I am trying to start up the main startup efforts and for me how I'm going to approach startups is a little bit different than how other people approach it I think when people think about startups they say let me pause my music when people think about startups they think that you need to have an idea you need to have customers and um, there's like three you have the idea that's good you have customers and you need to build it yeah, you need to start building it, I think. And that's great, but that's sort of assuming... Um, it's almost coming from a pa place of privilege. And I mean that in the sense that... if it, uh, How do you say? The only way it works out for the average person is if you have a job to sustain yourself and the startup is just on your free time. And... I need something to happen a lot more quicker than that. And I also want to hone to develop the skills to a deeper extent than the typical like startup person. I don't just want to be like a pencil pusher. I actually want to understand the tech. I want to I'm an engineer. I have engineering degrees. So I that's sort of where I come at startups from. Um and I also am interested in serial entrepreneurship. So I, I want to do this over and over. I don't want to just get lucky on one. And then when that's run its cycle, then just relax for the rest of my life. Like I want to do this forever. And so what for me that looks like is like for a year, year and a half, learning all the, learn breaking this down into like steps and then learning, learning and developing and pushing out products and the first step of it where I can't really push out anything is um, how do you do the start like how do you get an idea how do you um, make sure how do you validate it and then had everything up to the point where you're actually building it and it's kind of a very it can be very fluid and undefined but I tried to make it uh, concrete. And so for me, what that looks like is we're talking about uh, UX UI design. We're talking about lean methodology and customer discovery. And there was one, oh, market research and competitive analysis uh, and differentiation. I guess you could throw that in there. So it's essentially three pillars or three areas that I want to learn. Uh, I'm still thinking about how I'm going to approach this first step am I gonna learn just UX UI design first and then in parallel to like all the other tests just read and study up on lean methodology and market research because this in itself could take like three or four months if I wanted to but I, I also want to be quick I don't just want to dwell or spend too much too much time just having it in like in intellectual porn or fantasizing about it um so i'm i'm still thinking of the uh the format i guess you could say the format of the project and how i'm going to approach it but i know for sure i want to learn ux ui design that's going to be specifically uh with figma so being able to have an idea for an app 
have an idea for a website or a service, and then um, make a prototype or a mock-up of it. Mock-up is a better word. Make a mock-up of it that I would then hand off, hand off in this scenario to uh, app designer or web designer. As you notice, my own in my own journey, I want to learn app and web design, so the, <laughs> I would hand it off to my future self essentially. And then uh, I, I want to spend about a week learning Git. This is gonna be in parallel to this, so I think today we'll go over like one or two hours, learn some Git, and I'll do that for the rest of this week. And then uh, that'll be this part of my this part will be done. And then in parallel to that, I guess like maybe thirty minutes a day, start learning about blockchain, cryptocurrency, Web three. I think there's opportunities here, um, but I want to make sure that there are actually opportunities and I'm not just sort of reading fancy news headlines that try to um, push their own news. So I, yeah, I'm pre sort of preparing in blockchain for the long haul. If there is something valid there, then by the end of this journey, by the end of these tasks, I'll have sort of an idea and I'm able to start using the skills I learned to to actually start something in, in Web3 or, or using a blockchain. And then, or actually not in then, but once, so these two are in parallel. I can do these 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, doesn't matter what, what else I'm learning. But this is gonna be like main priority number one. After that, main priority number two. So this would be like I spend two to three hours a day on it after I'm done with this area, moving on to this where I'm spending two to three hours a day, at least while I'm in my PhD, once I drop out, it's gonna be like five to eight hours a day, spend an hour on this, an hour on this, while I'm doing these other two, but hopefully you get the point. Same thing with this one, this could be just whenever I'm done with this or whenever I have time, it, it doesn't have to be the thing that I spend five to eight hours a day on. Once I do full stack web development, iOS app development, Android app development. <clears throat> yeah, and I make it sound so easy, but it's probably gonna take like at least four to eight weeks per <clears throat> per area. And my goal with each area is I'm not just learning. Like I'm gonna have a few projects where I'm actually pushing out uh, ideas that can make me some money. So for like full stack web development, I have a few web ideas that I'm gonna implement while I'm learning and try to start making some money, which is why creating a company is important. Um, so I make sure that company registers the profits and then also improve my own website once I learn more like JavaScript and more of the dynamic. Add more dynamics to my website, something like that. And same thing for iOS app, Android app, learning, but also developing. And then once I'm, once I'm sort of done, move on to the next area. So if you notice, I'm not really aiming to think of a startup from the start or think of a startup for each area. These are just little side projects that can make me some money. The main starting up, the main building, isn't until I sort of run through a cycle of all of these areas. So once I learn Android app development, I'm, I wanna learn marketing and sales a little bit. So for like one to two months, um, read a lot, use some of the apps I've already developed, some of the web services I've already developed, and be be accust get accustomed with the practices and the actually do marketing and sales, actually push out some of the things that I'm learning. Yeah, I think that's what I had to say there. And at at this point, I think this is gonna be like minimum six to eight months from now, maximum probably half a year if I really drag it out um, and spend time on each area. 
So in about eight months, a year, I'll probably be here at the end of finished with this. So at that point, I'm going to be looking for ideas, actually doing market research, actually doing competitive analysis, actually doing customer interviews, talking with customers, understanding their pain points, and then making a prototype. And then you, you can see where this sort of just becomes a spiral that sort of feeds itself and I am able to improve on my skills. So then once I have an idea, if it needs a web, uh, a website, I can throw up a website or maybe it's just a newsletter or a, a mailing list. So I'll throw that up and make the, the iOS app for whatever uh, Figma mockup I had and then run whatever marketing and sell things I learned and, and then just continue. Either I, I have a good idea and I think what I'm not mentioning here is, um, the part that I, that I can't really practice or, uh, learn as much is the funding and the VC and the accelerators, incubators. Um, so once I, once I, I guess once I get to this stage in a year, which is actually a really long time from now, but once I get to the stage, I'll see if I have any ideas that are, well, actually, okay, let's go back to basics. My first goal is 5,000 in passive income. So while I don't have 5,000 in passive income, I am going to continue this cycle. Once I have 5,000 in passive income, I'm okay to take the risks and put all my chip, all my chips. It won't really be all my chips because I've already developed uh, the apps, the websites that are giving me passive income, but I'm going to put the rest of my time and energy into one idea that will then give me a $10 million exit that has the opportunity to give me a $10 million exit and just continue trying until either that idea succeeds or another idea succeeds. After that, we'll work on the next idea. Uh, the, assuming that that idea had run its course, or maybe it's big enough that I can make it a hundred, a hundred million dollar company or make it a billion dollar company. So we'll see. It doesn't necessarily have to be one idea, exit, another idea, exit. If, if I get all the way to a billion from the, f on the first, uh, iteration or the first idea, perfect. And yeah, that's some recap of my journey or my timeline how i'm going to approach this and in addition to that this is the main learning like this is uh, the potato and the potatoes the potatoes and the meat of of this journey and then to supplement that because i think it's just important to always be learning i'm curious at least about all these different things so i'm going to have startup and entrepreneurial resources, which I need to update, but uh, it's going to be all the books, courses, videos, websites, TV shows, movies that, I, that I'm watching. And I'm really going to try to immerse myself in, in this and in the history and other founders. And these are the people I'm going to be learning from. First one's going to be Jeff Bezos. I ordered like eight of his books. I have a bunch of podcasts in mind want to see all of his interviews literally every single interview that i can find on jeff bezos i'm going to watch and probably spend like 30 minutes a day on it and once i'm done move on to the next person like i'm just always hungry for knowledge and then as i'm learning just updating it saying what i've learned so far the two learnings i had was just just start and this first applied when i was starting my youtube I first was thinking of making like influence, influencer type content, uh, little like documentaries or those sorts of videos. But it turns out it's probably just easier, more productive if I don't have to script my whole videos and my videos are just me working easier to, or interesting for, it's interesting enough for some people. So just start. And then I can sort of refine it on the way and get feedback from the views and 
from the people and uh, works out better. The second thing is I really wanted to have like the perfect sequence. Like I do this, I do this, I do this. It and it's it's going like, but uh, there really isn't a perfect sequence. Well, <laughs> not how to. What's a better way to say it? There is a perfect sequence. Yeah, there is a perfect sequence. Forget that I said there isn't a perfect sequence. There isn't. There isn't the perfect circumstances. But there is the perfect sequence, I think, is a better way to say it. So, yeah, circumstances are never going to be great. You may have a job. You may have kids. It You could be going through through hell. You, you're depressed. There isn't the perfect time to do it, but there is the perfect sequence. And the first thing to do, if you really lack the motivation, motivation and you're depressed, is just work on your mental health make sure that um that you're as motivated and willing to put in a little extra time each day and work on whatever you want to work on and in particular entrepreneurship for this effort after that you want to make sure for entrepreneurship that you have financial stability that if you do this how are you going to pay the bills are you doing it sort of hoping that it works out on the first time and you're in the middle of a crisis and you need to come up with uh, your mortgage payment in like three months, a huge check that you don't have? Or, yeah, so just make sure you're stable because you can't assume that you're going to make it on the first attempt. Next thing after that is make sure you're healthy. Do you have proper nutrition? Do you have enough sleep? Are you there mentally? If you're not, um, yeah, always continue to refine your mental state. So, again, are you there mentally? Um, if you're not, whatever issues you have are just going to be exasperated, exas exasperated, uh, amplified by the stress and the uh, how how much time entrepreneurship and I don't want to say grinding, but the amount of time that you have to put in to make things work is just going to make everything else more difficult. And if you don't already have it as a habit and you don't have it automated in your life, you can assume that you're not going to have longevity because you're going to be sick. You're going to be stressed. You're going to have terrible relations with your family if you don't know how to handle the stress. So that's an important aspect. And then after that, this one's more optional. But for me, it was important. I have lots of projects going on. Uh, you should ideally focus on one, but I'm, I, I know I can handle more than one. And given the moment, given the circumstances right now, where I'm a PhD student, I need to handle more than one. Um, I needed to set up a project management system and just make sure my habits with my own computer are good. It's sort of like um, home care or hygiene. But at least for your digital computer with your files, making sure you're tidy and making sure you know where things are. So that for me was important. Then after that is learning. For me, uh, I don't really just want to have an idea, try to make it work, see if it works or not. Doesn't work. Okay, move on to the next. Have an idea, try to make it work. What skills do you pick up? You, you're not really able to f learn solid skills. If you're always just trying to make it work, I'm pushing out an MVP, um, using ChatGPT, didn't really learn Java, didn't really learn this. So if everything fails, maybe I can find a startup that will take me. But if not, you can't really work in industry. So at least by learning these skills, if nothing works in like two years, at least get a job at, I don't know, like Costco or lululemon where you can work on ux ui design or ios app development so that's one of the reasons i want to focus on this at least i have like a backup plan those jobs pay well still able to focus still have enough time and still able to focus on uh, starting up after a day's work uh, let's see learning and then starting up yeah so that goes in line 
or synergizes with my overall ambition, which is good. What is this? Give me a second. I think this looks like it's a different font size than. No, actually, it's the same. All right. Font size 17 pixels. No. Oh, they are different. Unfair. Wait, one R E M is still 17 pixels. Yeah, should be fine. Oh. Okay. Why does it look different though? It looks small. I'll deal with it later. This is bothering me. Give me a second. I st it's above principles. Oh, is it because it's... I don't know. I think it's the same. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just move on. So I was saying that Where was I? Oh, okay. So I think I was saying that my overall and then starting up synergizes with or is aligned with my overall strategy. And I went over this, went over people. Motivation was not an issue for me. Um, and I was all over the place, really. You're not an overnight success, so you need stability. I created a company way too early when I was still learning. Yeah. So everything looks good there. And before I go on to financial stability or planning out my finances, that's something I did in these past two weeks. Let's see. This is... This is my plan for the website. So if you're looking around my website and you don't, you see that something isn't filled out, you can sort of see where it is on my priorities. Right now I wanna flesh out the March to Optimal Health area. So filling out my fitness plan, adding, ad adding the biomarkers, adding learnings, adjusting font size, which I think I actually already did, filling out meditation, adding references, updating my results, and then taking some base markers that I didn't do already. After that, March to startup. So adding links to all these, which I actually need to fill out their projects in themselves, creating pages for the people I'm studying, particularly Jeff Bezos, as well as the resources I'm gonna go over. And then starting up other projects. After that, in the future, these are the things I'm gonna work on adding a blog section to this website we can see uh, once I've updated like a page or added a new page you can look at that but I'd prefer my website to be digested sort of like oh I where am I in life oh I care about my emotional health let's see what he's doing what he's done oh he has nothing oh that sucks well but um, yeah my audience primarily would first be like I wonder what he's doing occupationally and financially. How is he supporting himself? And then you can see the two areas that I'm working on. March to startup. What am I doing here? What are my goals? And then you can sort of deep dive into that if 
that is related to your goals in life. Uh, yeah, so that was my website. Showed about, showed contact. Okay, so the last part was my finances. So this is like, I guess for transparency. Um, but also, I, well, not, this, not even just for transparency, but to get insights and to share how I'm going to approach this. Uh, and you can read it. I'll just try to go over like the summaries of it. Right now, I'm sort of supporting myself with as a PhD student with TAing. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm actually trying to get on my PhD so quickly in the way that I am and not sort of continue to be in my PhD, but in, but then also doing this on the side. One of the reason that I'm not is because as a PhD student, I only take $36,000 home. And my commitments are my PhD research, which alone itself in it and of itself is like a full-time job or it is a full-time job. And ideally, if you want to be the best PhD student, you're committing more time than just a full-time job. Um, the best of the best at the very top are probably spending like 60 to 80 hours a week on this. Well over 40. And consider that I also have to hold a TA position to fund my research. So it's just how am I going to be broke, but then also working two jobs essentially it's not working out for me and I could take a tech job but the issue there is that m most tech jobs are um, time consuming and even though normal te tech job that's 40 hours a week that's still 40 hours a week that I'm not starting up. And I want to try to get to 5K in passive income per month as quickly as possible. And um, right now, given that I have like a six month grace period from when I have to start paying loans, and we're moving in with my wife's parents, which I actually will get to. I, why not just take the risk now? Why not just try to get this going now? Get 5,000 passive income. I'm in my mid 20s I can get 5,000 passive income well before I'm 30 so why not why why not take the risk right now why not just have no commitments other than this put my all into it and see where I'm at uh, in a year or two and if it's going if I can see I'm going in that direction great if I'm not now we have to consider a tech job and and um yeah, not just live with my wife's parents for until we're 30 uh, and not make anything of myself. So there's that sort of my perspective. And yes, yeah, so moving out with my uh, moving out in with my wife's parents. I have student debt. And one actually one idea that came up in my mind was. Uh, if I don't move out, it makes my journey more realistic because then I have to find a way to pay rent. Most people aren't living in their parents' house unless you're a high schooler. Um, but I mean, there's a de decent amount of like college students that are actually still living in their parents' house. So not to knock on, on you, um, but I could make my journey more relatable by doing that. But then I thought about, look, I, I want to be a billionaire and I'm willing to do whatever it takes as long as I'm not crossing any of my moral boundaries. And if it makes my my story unrelatable, that's fine because I, I want it that badly. Now, the other thing to consider since I don't have to pay rent is uh, I do have student loans. And I don't want to get a tech job, so how am I going to just pay these student loans? I have 90000 in student loans. Um, if I didn't have these loans, a weekend job is enough to just have some income coming in so I can pay like for uh, any 
I don't know, costs that I come in with my web, with websites, hosting, uh, developer fees, anything that comes in like that. But, um, I have 90,000 in loans that I need to consider. And the issue, or one of the things that I could do is use my 72,000 in assets, digital and physical, pay it off. If I'm financially conservative, risk averse, I would do that in a heartbeat. Then I only have 18,000 in student loans. Monthly payment would be like $180. is isn't a lot. But right now, monthly payments somewhere along the lines of like $1,000. Um, and my issue with that approach is uh, digital assets are cryptocurrency, is, is a cryptocurrency. And I think it's actually going to grow. And so I don't want to just liquidate my assets and then pay off my loans. Uh, the only reason that I would do that is if I see that my cryptocurrency isn't really like making any progress and I can't really help it, which I'll touch on. Um, yeah, and then you can sort of see my, my calculations. These are some monthly costs that I had. Ended up counts, canceling seven of them. Um, and then the rest are ones that I need to try to, that I want to try to keep. So that means that I have to make over 1.5K per month um, to pay off these, to pay off my student loan, which is $1,000 a month. And um, yeah, I need to try to, I need to find a way to make that as soon as possible. For now, the way that I'll pay off the student loans is getting a custodian job. As as much of an entrepreneurship, as, as much as I see myself as an entrepreneur, and given that I have a master degree and all that, like it's fancy, but got to work the weekend job and pay off student loans, find a way to make 400 to cover the rest. So that that isn't too bad. I think freelancing is very doable, especially in the next few months once I learn some of these skills that I'm mentioning, um, it's going to be very doable. And then some other, th the other thing that I was touching on was food. I think food can be very expensive if you aren't very, um, if you don't do your research. And my diet is unprocessed, it's healthy, it's high protein. I think I'm taking in like 120 to 150 grams of protein but it's only costing me $220 a month. I don't have to do any of the Chipotle hacks or any of the Subway hacks, which would put you well over $300 a month um, for just one meal. For me, I'm getting all of my nutrition at only $220. And you can see my the breakdown of the costs. And yeah. And the last thing I guess that I'll touch on here as well was um, why would I want to keep crypto when it's so volatile? Why not just sell it? And for me, I read that crypto is right now where Windows was in the 90s. It, there's lots of possible innovations that can happen, but the space is so, there's so many people with uh, ill intentions that um, that it can actually seem dumb or too there's too much risk here but for me i'm a builder i'm an entrepreneur i i know my intentions i only want to create things that are, that are helpful and considering i need to do some more research but considering the technology behind the specific crypto that i'm invested in it seems to be top tier and so i can i want to try to build applications services and have that first mover's ad advantage uh, if you could go back in time, given what you know now, would you try to build on, on Windows in the 90s? What ideas would you have? And so I, given that sort of frame of approaching this space, um, I'm going to take advantage of it and see if I can uh, have, sell any services. Because I know people are willing to to adopt things there and almost too quickly where they fall into scams. Um, so I, yeah, there's lots of opportunity there. Figured let's, let's take advantage of the time and 
maybe it goes somewhere, maybe it doesn't, at least we're trailblazing. <clears throat> so that's overview of everything. Uh, let's see, that's updates to my website. Oh, and then updates to my channel. So let's pull up my channel. Okay, so my YouTube has been, I, well, I haven't really been focused on it. Last video I posted was, wow, 19 days ago, three weeks, wow. Okay, so <laughs> haven't really been uh, focused on it, but it's still growing. 37 in the last 28 days, that's about one subscriber every day or a little bit more. Um, so that's my main channel. I have a second channel where it's supposed to be what I'm learning. So here it would be like technology that I'm learning. I, w I was thinking I would do like when I'm learning Git, post videos here. Once I actually am using Git, like the actual just usage, the application of something, it would be on this channel. Uh, same thing with Figma, same thing with like iOS app development. But I think that can be a little bit tricky because I'm trying to learn and build. So it's sort of hand in hand at times. And so the lines get really blurred really quickly and it becomes kind of messy to deal with. So what I'm thinking about actually doing is this channel is going to be my, my, I guess, Francisco Monroy raw, where I just post these hour long videos, two hour long, three hour long videos. And of what I'm working on and yeah it, whenever I'm working and I feel inclined to record myself I'll just post it here this channel I'll end up deleting it kind of sucks because it you know it had 20 24 subscribers um, so this will be the raw channel and then I'll make another one that's my main channel and that main channel will have sort of the weekly updates or the uh, packaged videos. So the really the only packaged video I made was this one, the Obsidian Plus getting things done. Out, but it was an hour long. So even for that video, I don't think it was well packaged. The other packaged video I made was why I chose to leave my PhD. And that video was to some extent packaged, but not really. Yeah, and everything else is just about my March to Startup. So I, I want to make little, I guess, digestible sized videos there that, that are like 8 to 16 minutes long. Post that all on my main channel. If they want to see more about that, more about the process, they can go down, they can go to this channel and really get a a feel for it. So this will be where I'm posting like daily, if not daily, maybe every two days, every three days of me working. And my main channel will be where I post maybe once a week, once every two weeks about summarized uh, things that I worked on. I think that makes more sense to me because yeah, the other alternative could have been that I record my stuff and go live and that makes the separation between the videos clear, which I would have liked, but I can't go live. Like I, there's too many slip ups of me showing texts or me showing personal numbers in my life, uh, numbers of people in my life. So that I need to blur out. So lots of issues there. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's the update to my channel that I'm going to make. And then the next thing is just we'll probably spend some time learning Git. So let's see. So I have these four, five resources. This is the Git docs. This is... Uh, Git fundamentals course provided by Microsoft doesn't look too long, maybe like four or five hours. The Git book 
I think by one of the Git founders or GitHub founders. And this is more of like an immersive book, I guess you could say. And then this ten, this 10 hour video. So I, I want to narrow down which ones I'm going to be studying and yeah, see which ones are redundant, which ones are the most digestible. And then my goal at the end of this of studying Git is to take the LinkedIn assessment and then I'll also probably pay for the uh, GitHub Fundamentals certificate. I'm considering whether I'll pay for it, but that's sort of like my, the, how do you say, the certificate or the, the proof that I that I'm a, that I learned and that I applied what I was learning. So I'm gonna take a quick break, and then we'll get to learning some Git for an hour. Yeah. Change of plans. I'm not used to recording. Now that I'm going back into it. Um, so I think I'm gonna study offline, at least until I get into the hang of it again. Uh, but I did narrow it down. So what I'm going to study is this GitHub Foundation Certification course. It's 10 hours long. Once I finish that, I think I'm going to go through this, see if there's anything that not covered here. And then um, probably just skim this book, see what areas I felt like I, I don't quite understand which ones are okay, and then just do that. And then at the end, it seems like the certification course is important, useful enough. So I would probably take the certification course. Goal is by April 14th. So yeah, see y'all next time.